morning, everyone. So lovely to see you all here in the building and online. Um, I hope you've had a really good week and God has blessed you. I know God's going to bless you this morning. I just was asking the Holy Spirit, what do you want to say to people this morning? What are you going to do this morning? And I've, I've just got my prop because I love a bit of visual. Um, I just thought the Holy Spirit was saying it's a time of refreshing and for living waters to flow. And Jesus says that living waters would flow from us. And that we can be like a well-watered garden. So I just, this morning, just come and receive. Come and drink. If you're thirsty, come and drink. If you're dry, if you're tired, come to him. He's got all we need. He is all sufficient. So have an awesome time with God this morning. We're here to encounter him. Thank you, Wes. before we go into the worship today I just want to say no matter the name the paper has the media parade there is one name that is above all else and their name is Jesus for by this name shall all men on earth be saved one name goes way
fail. Jesus, you never fail. And that is what we we'll sing of your goodness day in, day out. The system may fail us. We may not know what the situation or the circumstances or the su- so- solution to situations, Father. But we know you, that God. And you never fail. You are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the great I am. You're the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. You know all things. And we trust you, Jesus, that your goodness will never fail us. For your word says, if my mother and my father forsake me, but you will never forsake me. Because you're God. You're omnipotent, on the shades, on the benevolent. You're God and that is your name. Yes, Lord. God, that we can sing of your goodness, that we can speak of your goodness, that you say through Jesus that we are children of God because of what you did, Jesus, on the cross. Thank you that your goodness is running after us. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Thank you that you refresh us, that you are provision for us, that Jesus, that you are enough. Yeah. Thank you so much, worship team very powerful this morning so before the notices come I'm going to read some scripture to you from Exodus 3 1 to 20 that's what we're going to be looking at this morning Moses and the burning bush now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro his father-in-law the priest of Midian And he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Hebron, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire through within a burning bush, within a bush. Moses saw that through the bush, that the bush bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight. Why does the bush not burn up? When the Lord said, saw that he had gone over to look, God called him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for this, the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the land of the Egyptians, to them from the land of the Egyptians, and to bring them up from out of the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites have reached me, and I have seen the way of the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt." But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? 
God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, "Um, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name by which I am to be remembered from generation to generation. Go, assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, appeared to me and said, I have watched over you and have seen that what has been done to you in Egypt. And I have promised to bring you up out of your misery in Egypt into the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites and Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. The elders of Israel will listen to you. Then you and the elders are to go to the king of Egypt and say to him, The Lord, the God of of the Hebrews, has met with us. Let us take a three-day journey into the desert to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand compels him. So I will stretch out my hand and strike the Egyptians and all the wonders that I will perform among them. After that, he will let you go. And now we're going to hear the notices. Thanks so much. So good morning, everybody. First of all, a few notices today. First one is there is an Accounter Cafe starting online on Thursday the 24th of September. This is going to run live through Facebook at noon. Also, the Potting Shed is restarting as of tomorrow. This is uh, an opportunity for new Christians or people of any belief system to come together and ask questions. Um, It is a support group that will be held between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. in the Coleman Suite at the Plaza Centre. Every Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. there is a prayer meeting held via Zoom and it would be great to have anyone who would like to be involved to take part if you're available. The cafe reopened last week, which is fantastic. It would be great to see many of the fellowship there come by with a friend for a coffee and a bit of cake. Um, You can see the changes in the new foyer, the results of the foyer facelift. It's a great environment, be lovely to see you there. The next Sky's the Limit conversation held via Zoom with the leadership team is happening on the 1st of October at noon. Details of this are held in the news sheet. This is for anybody within the fellowship fellowship who has now retired. A huge congratulations and applause to Ash and Alison who celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary yesterday. We really admire and honour you guys and we really hope that you are able to celebrate with loved ones around you. And also we're so proud and huge congratulations to Rachel Macy who went off to university at Reading this week. Please hold her in your prayers as she begins this new journey away from home making new friends and studying. Just pray that she knows that God is with her every step away and so are we. So finally it's time to make space for our tithes and offerings. Thank you so much to everyone who's continued to give faithfully. And we pray and declare a blessing over your finances, fruit over your labour and provision from our Heavenly Father who is a generous, loving God who knows all of our needs and never lets us go without. So that is everything from me now. Thank you for bearing with me. And I'm going to hand over now to Peter Burgess. First time I've had the privilege of, of preaching where there's been people back in the back in the Plaza Centre, so it's great that you could join us this morning. Um, just want to say a big thank you to Lindsay for reading that scripture for me. Uh, she didn't get loads and loads of warning, but um, she probably read it far better than I would have done. So um, a big appreciation to Lindsay for stepping in and doing that. Much appreciated. I. I just want to talk out of that story um, this morning for the next 20 minutes or so 
we've, um, we've heard a lot of different things over the last six months of lockdown. Um, lots of different threads that God has been saying, that God has been stirring in us, that we really believe is the heart of God for us now to start moving and exploring. And I was just reading this scripture. We actually read this scripture and used this scripture, this story, on the first ever um, filling station back in, back in July. And, and I just really feel lots of the elements that have been shared by many people over the summer have actually are finding themselves in this story. And as you read this story, um, you see many of the different elements coming out. And that's why I just want us to, to look at this story again today. See, over the summer, we've, we've heard about our, our call as an apostolic family and the importance of encountering God afresh and anew, the importance of family and, and knowing where you belong to and whose you are. We've been, we've been hearing about it's a time of going and being sent and that God is sending us out afresh and anew. Chrissy was talking last week about anointing. And so much of these different elements that God has been talking to us about, we find in this story of Moses. And what I, what I found really helpful was just looking at it afresh and, and beginning to put some of these elements we've been sharing into some type of order. Um, if, you, if you live in our house, you would know that we don't live in the most spotless of house. Sometimes you'd say there wasn't a great deal of, of, of order around. Chrissy, bless her, she spends most of her time running after the four of us, trying to sort everything out and put back things back in the place where they, where they should be. You know, we have one tidy person in our house, and then there's the rest of us. There's not always a great, a great deal of order, but I've, I've learned in 15 years of marriage that order actually is beneficial. To actually know where you've put something away and you can find it straight away, particularly when you need to get somewhere else and do something else, to know, to know where you put it last is an amazing gift that I still need to discover. But to have people around you that do know where it is is really helpful. So there's an order that I just want to just talk about. So most of what I've said today, you have heard different people preaching around over the last three or four months, but I just feel like as I read this chapter and into chapter four, there's an order that God just wants to highlight for us. And, and a number of folk have spoken about the, the fact that God is calling us afresh. There's a fresh call of God on us as a people. There's a call of God for us to be something. But when I was just looking at this story of Moses in the burning bush, it says in Exodus 3 verse 4, when, God saw, when, God, when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, he called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses, and Moses said, here am I. There's a call. God is calling us. God is looking for our attention. And, and we've talked over the last months about how God is calling us afresh. And I believe we are in a time and we are in a season where God is calling us into something new. But he's calling us to himself. He's trying to get our attention. When I want to speak to the kids, they could be anywhere in the house. But you call out to your kids. You call them by name. You try and get their attention. God is trying to get our attention. And back in that filling station, when we looked at the story of, of Burning Bush a couple of months ago, there was this sense that God is calling us. God is trying to get our attention. He wants to speak to us afresh. He wants to encounter us again. He wants us, like Moses, to, to capture our attention and for us to respond and for us to be a people that are moving and drawing closer to him. God initiates encounter with us. He's very good at getting our attention. However, there is a need on us, just like Moses, to respond, to move, to embrace something new. It says in verse 2, Moses says, I will go over and I will see this strange sight. I want to say sometimes when God is trying to get our attention, it can seem somewhat strange. And over the years, God has done some miraculous stuff. God has done some stuff which is unusual or different throughout the scriptures. The amount of stories where God does something which breaks the norm. And sometimes when we see God breaking the norm, it can feel strange, it can feel weird. And sometimes it grabs our attention like it did for Moses. And sometimes... We can be a bit scared of it. God doesn't normally do this. This is not the way church normally looks. I want to say this is a season where he's calling us 
This is a season where he's trying to get our attention. And in doing so, and in initiating an account, sometimes it feels strange. It looks strange. It doesn't look right. And I think we're probably in a season where church feels a little strange. It doesn't normally look like this. Well, I want to say maybe this is God just trying to get our attention. Maybe this is God just calling us by name. Maybe this is God initiating an encounter so he can speak words of life, words of hope, words of direction, words of vision, words of freedom to us. I want to say, don't walk away, but walk through it. Don't go, this is strange, this is different, this is uncomfortable, I'm going to go and hide. Let's be a Moses, let's be like Moses, let's go and explore this strange sight. This strange phenomenon that is before us. This thing that I've never seen before with my eyes. Maybe this is God trying to wake us up and call us by name and initiate a fresh and a new encounter. Because it was out of that encounter, it was after Moses had gone and inquired, he met with God in the bush. Moses spoke with God and God spoke with Moses. They had a conversation. And then in verse 10... God says to Moses, so now go. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring you to my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. We can't be sent until we've come. We can't be sent until we've called, been called. We can't be sent until we've had that encounter with God. So often growing up, you hear the phrase, you can't run before you can walk. You can't go until you you've come you can't be sent by God until you've come and encountered him heard him met with him seen him touched him understood his heart understood his word understood his desire you can't go you can't be sent until before you've come before you've been called I'll send him to this town to this county, to the country, to your family, to your friends, to your workplaces, wherever God is going to send you. You can only go after you've encountered him. And your qualification in being sent is that you've responded and embraced the encounter of God. That is, that burning bush moment was Moses' qualification to then go. And then what Chrissy was starting to talk about last week was this whole dynamic of encounter, uh, of anointing. And she spent it last week talking about the whole dynamic of anointing. 2 Corinthians 1 verses 21 and 22 says this, Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us. He set his seal of ownership on us. And he put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. And I just want to unpack a little bit this stuff about anointing. Because we're not just called. We're not just sent, we're anointed. She quoted the Strong's concordance last week. When she said, anointing is a special empowerment of the Holy Spirit. When God sends us, he empowers us. He anoints us. Well, what does that really mean? And and Chrissy talked a little bit about it last week, but I just want to expand on it a little bit more. You see, he says to Moses in Exodus 3 verse 12, And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign that you, that is I that I've sent you, when you brought the people out of Egypt and worshipped God on this mountain, he has anointed us and he has put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit. He will be with us as we go. As we are sent, he's coming too. He's putting his spirit in us as a deposit, as a guarantee of what is to come. Exodus 3.17 I have promised you to bring you up out of the misery into the land which is flowing with milk and honey. When we're sent, when we're anointed, he comes with us for the journey and he makes the promise. He's guaranteeing what is to come. 
And as you read over in Exodus 4, and because I needed to be fairly kind to Lindsay, I couldn't make her, make her read Exodus 4 as well as Exodus 3. But as you roll over the page and as you carry on reading, you realise not only is he going to come with us, not only is he going to make us a promise, he says in Exodus 4 verse 12, I will help you. Now go and I will help you speak and I will teach you what to say. The help comes as we go. He teaches us as we go. We don't have to have it all perfect. We don't have to have it all right. We don't have to understand it, but we do, be, we do need to be willing to go. We do need to be willing to move. We do need to be willing to step out. We do need to be willing to step into an environment where we're unsure. Can I do this? But as we go, we find he comes with us. He promises us. He helps us. And in verse 15, it talks about, and I will teach you. I will help you and I will teach you. But go, because you're going to learn along the way. You're going to be equipped along the way. And as you read through into verse 17 of chapter 4, he says, I will equip you. It says, but take this staff in your hand so you will perform the signs with it. See, staffs being turned into snakes and back again. And Moses' staff became a weapon of equipping. God gave him a staff. He equipped him to perform signs and wonders, to perform the miraculous, to, to step into the realm of the supernatural. So I believe that God is calling us to encounter us in order to send us. But in our sending... I just believe there are these five things he wants us to know. That when we go, he's coming too. When we go, there's a promise that he will fulfill. That when we go, he will help us. That when we go, he will teach us. And when we go, he will equip us. But it starts with us being willing to explore that burning bush moment in our lives. Moses was willing to explore what seemed strange but turned out to be an encounter with God. And today I want to encourage us to go on a journey to explore what seems strange, what doesn't look like normal, but maybe God is just calling us by name. Moses, Moses, maybe you need to put your name instead of Moses. Maybe God is calling you to explore something that looks strange, something that looks unusual, something you've never seen before, something that maybe doesn't look like church or look like God, and maybe just in that moment you might discover God afresh and anew. And out of that encounter we'll find that he sends you and, and anoints you afresh. See, the, the sending and the anointing was order, in order to lead the people into freedom. To lead the people into inheritance. And as the worship team come back and as we finish today, I just want to say that when God calls you, he calls you to encounter you. He calls you in order that he can send you. And in that sending there will be an anointing. But that anointing is for freedom and that anointing is for inheritance. And I just want to declare over each one of you, there is a greater measure of freedom, there is a greater measure of inheritance for you to step into, that the promises that he's spoken over your life, he wants to establish his truth, he wants to give you the testimonies of the prophetic words over you. And I believe that as we respond to God, as we follow this pattern in scripture, as we allow ourselves to be drawn in by him, to encounter him afresh, to be ready to be sent and anointed, it's because he wants wants to establish freedom, it's because he wants to establish inheritance, he wants us to see and live in the fruit of his promises over our lives and therefore over you today we want to declare that the purposes of God is he wants to set you free from the burdens that you're now facing and he wants to establish you on firm ground where you can enjoy the inheritance he has won for you and as his sons and his daughters he wants to bless you like you've never been blessed before. So the worship team, just lead us 
into this place. And as they play and as they sing, why don't you just accept the challenge of the burning bush and go and find God in a strange place? Yes. If you don't come, you can be used. Mary yielded a life. And that was why she was used to breath the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And Jesus brought his will on her. And he wants you and I to carry his will continuously. Father, so we ask that your kingdom come.
let your heaven come. <laughs> let earth be as it is in heaven. We declare it over our circumstances, over our situations, over our health, over our families. I just saw this picture of like a, a matted mess, basically. Um, and I just feel it's something someone's going through right now and it doesn't feel like there's a solution, like there's a way out. But actually, like, you've got a ball of thread, you can't find the end of it. Jesus knows exactly where it is and he can find the solution. And he wants to take you up higher to see it from his perspective. So if that's you, whether you're listening online or whether you're here in the building... Jesus is the answer. He's got your back. It's not hopeless. So don't despair. Provision is coming. <laughs> yes, I want to bless you all this week. That you would see heaven come. That you would step into situations and change the atmosphere. Where there is fear, that you would bring hope and joy and peace. And you would step as Jesus steps, because <laughs> he's in us, and he is powerful, so we are powerful. So I bless you mightily. <sighs> Amen. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you again soon.